graphics and usability. Um, it does have these 3D display of buildings. Um, Real-time traffic reroute, and I've experienced this uh, several times on our pre-production lots, even setting up this route, uh, coming down here and there's a big traffic jam, uh, and the system says uh, on your route, uh, there's some traffic. Would you like to take an alternate route that'll save you 16 minutes? And of course I said, yeah, I definitely do. That's exactly what, so, and it works really well. You just push it and you're on this uh, side road and you can see the traffic has stopped. Uh, and it works great. Um, beyond that, uh, it does display the speed limits, uh, your arrival time. It also has these really nice, uh, realistic uh, freeway signs. Uh, so you have a really good understanding of the lading items of, of which roads to take. There are many other electronic uh, convenience features that we apply because it's a family vehicle. And we wanted to put in the things that are really easy to use and add a lot to your daily life. We do have smart entry, we do have push button start, but I want to tell you a little bit about the uh, remote engine start. We're putting remote engine start as standard on EX and above, um, and it is linked to your climate control. So when you, and it has 60 yard range, so up to 60 yards away, you push and hold it, the vehicle starts up. If you are above or below 72 degrees, the system automatically uses whatever climate control you have whether it's just the heater or air conditioning, the heated and ventilated seats, the heated steering wheel, it'll turn on whatever is needed to go towards that 72 degrees. When you get in the vehicle and take over, um, then you just go back to your previous uh, climate control setting and you can uh, manually do whatever you like. In this smart operation category, uh, I, I explained a little bit more about our push button electronic gear selector that comes with the nine speed transmission. Um, it's not just a row of buttons, but it's got some ergonomic uh, layout to it. For example, the reverse is a button that you pull back. Uh, the drive is set at an angle, so it's a push forward. So there's a way to kind of feel around and know uh, where you are. But looking at it also, there's lights that indicate clearly uh, what gear you're selecting. We also have a series I3. If you uh, push and hold the voice recognition button uh, for two seconds and you have an iPhone connected, it goes right to Siri and, and the Siri talks to you through the, uh, through the vehicle system. From a smart maintenance standpoint, a couple of great new features, tire fill assist. Uh, so if the system lets you know that one of your uh, tires has low tire pressure on your MID, um, you go to add air, uh, this system while you're filling it up with air, will uh, beep and flash to let you know you've hit the target uh, tire pressure. So you don't have to carry a tire pressure gauge around. Another great convenience feature is capless refueling. Uh, I don't know if this happens to you, but a lot, a lot of times it happens to me. Right when you get done fueling, there's a drip of fuel right on the cap, right as you pull it out. Now there's gasoline on the cap, you have to put it back on to make sure it's sealed tightly so you don't get the warning your cap is loose. Then you've got gasoline on your hand really annoying. Capless refueling uh, works very easily and when you're done you can just close the lid and, and drive away. And pay and then drive away. And so that's a, it's a great convenience feature for, for the family. Now, this is a family vehicle so the most important thing is safety and that's why I left it for last. Um, I really wanted to highlight this. Uh, we started with key body construction features um, Honda's internal technology, our latest ACE body structure um, is the kind of orangest thing in the front. Uh, our new three-bone platform is the floor structure. It's, it's managing and guiding the load paths uh, to completely uh, protect the occupants. And then finally, the blue areas are ultra high strength steel reinforced uh, cabin ring to maintain the integrity of the cabin uh, for the occupants. So we want to start with a classic frontal crash. This is the NHTSA NCAP frontal crash mode, 35 miles an hour, right into a flat barrier. So what this does is fully engage everything. It takes the ACE body structure, manages the load into the three bone platform, utilizes the ultra high strength steel door ring. Um, all of the energy is completely directed and managed uh, to maintain the integrity of the cabin and, and protect the occupant. But it's such a classic.
classic flat mode that the IHS said, what happens when you don't completely engage the frame rails? What if you try something which we're going to call a small overlap test, and it's just on one side of the view? And that's what we're going to show you next. So we really dug into that. How do you manage the loads? How do you direct all of that energy? This is 40 miles an hour, and it doesn't engage the frame rails. So we still have our ACE body structure. We're trying to get some of the loads into the subframe. We're trying to direct the loads uh, up the A-pillar and down the side sill into our ultra high strength steel door ring. What we found is one of the critical components is the front wheel. If the front wheel completely comes off, you're directing too much load into the A pillar. If the front wheel doesn't do anything and just is a solid path, all the load goes through the, the lower side sill. And you don't do as much uh, complete protection as you want to. So if you manage that and work through that, uh, you can get the loads and maintain the integrity and completely protect uh, the occupants. It's our simulation capability paired with real life testing and our new global uh, light truck platform. We verified everything. Uh, our simulation allows us to verify all the variation and the limits uh, so that we can guarantee this mode uh, in, in, in this condition as much as possible. Safety is about several different parts. Let's start with the body. Uh, and those are some of the, the demonstrations I just showed is about the body. The body is structured, but the structure is when you actually had a crash. You also want to try to avoid a crash. So we've talked about uh, improving the visibility of the vehicle as much as possible, and we've got, we've got a lot of visibility technologies, uh, like the standard uh, rear camera, multi-view rear camera, also our lane watch system, uh, which is available on the EX up to the touring rig. That's visibility to make sure you have awareness and visibility. Uh, the auto high beam is another uh, visibility uh, night uh, enhancing capability. Uh, so this auto high beam has a high beam or low beam and it automatically adjusts uh, depending on the traffic so you don't uh, blind any of the oncoming traffic. We also have the most advanced uh, cutting edge uh, safety and driver assistive technologies which we call Honda Sensing. Um, that includes adaptive cruise control, lane keeping assist, uh, road departure mitigation, collision mitigation braking system, forward collision warning, lane departure warning, and on the elite grade, blind spot information and rear cross traffic monitor. Um, all of these technologies uh, make use of uh, the hardware, which is our monocular camera and the millimeter wave radar. I want to describe these a little bit, and I know many of you are already familiar with these technologies. Uh, the reason I want to describe it is so you know how to operate it and get a chance to experience it on the vehicle. The, v the first one I want to talk about is adaptive cruise control. It's really an extension of cruise control. It's a convenience feature that makes it easier to go on, on long trips uh, and be relaxed. Adaptive cruise control is tied with LCAS, which I'll explain next. There's a main switch on the steering wheel that turns on the ability to have ACC or LCAS, but it doesn't turn them on. Turning them on is a little bit separate. After that switch is on, and it should be on on the vehicles that you get in, but that means that the customer is able to turn it off if they like. After you push the main switch on, you set the cruise control with the set switch. It sets a speed, um, and it shows the vehicle has an outline. And the outline means I'm in active cruise, adaptive cruise control, but I haven't found a vehicle. When it does find a vehicle, it becomes solid like that. Um, you can also set the interval to be shorter or longer. Once you've set the interval and it finds a vehicle, and the, and the vehicle becomes solid, then it holds that. If someone pulls in front of you, it slows down to adjust back to the interval you chose. If they drive away, you speed up until you've found another vehicle that's uh, slower than uh, your speed, and it sets that interval. So it's pretty easy to understand. Again, the main switch is already on. You just set the cruise speed, set the interval that you like, and you'll know it's activated when it, when it becomes uh, solid, when it finds another Lane keeping assist uh, is a similar convenience function. It mitigates uh, lane drift and keeps you in your lane. That main switch turns on the ability to have LCAS, but it doesn't turn on the LCAS. You also have to choose that I would like to now use it. Uh, there is a separate switch, uh, which is gonna be shown here in a minute uh, when Mr. 
ghost guy pushes it. Um, that's pushing the main switch. That's the uh, LCAS switch on the lower uh, position there on the right side. Then the lines are dashed. It means now I'm looking for the lanes so that I can maintain the, the LCAS. It looks for yellow, it looks for white, it looks for reflectors, it looks for bot stops. When it finds them and it's truly working, uh, those lines will become solid. If you have adaptive cruise control working and LCAS, you'll have the solid lines, a uh, solid car sitting in there. Then you know that it's, it's all working and fighting. Uh, this works about 45 uh, miles per hour. Uh, it's really good on the freeway. And again, it's just a slight assist in the electric power steering uh, just to keep you in the middle of the lane. So these are something you'll be able to experience very easily on any freeway mode on your way down there or on your way back. Uh, and please uh, feel free to try that. Some of the other things we don't really want you to try, you might experience it a little bit.